Okay, so back to working on my Donkey Kong Jr. here. And where I left off, we had the monitor fixed, and we were playing the game, and but we still had some graphics issues. And I'm pretty sure this has to do with my two ink problems here. Uh, I had tried to check them before and uh, confirm that they were working, and I've always had trouble with these uh, 2716s, which is what these are on this side of the board, of the uh, DKJ video board. So what I'm going to do, I know it's these two Oki Data uh, chips here, and I'll be pulling them off the board, uh, throwing them into the burner, checking to see what the current state is of the EPROMs, and then probably getting some more 2732s to go ahead and replace these guys. So I'll do the trick with uh, filling the chip appropriately and, and putting the current data on them. So let's get this guy over to the EPROM burner and check him out. Alright, so I got 7E there on the burner, and let's pull up the screen here and take a look at what we got on the chip. So if I read it, so there's 7E, we're getting a checksum of 228. We can look at the data here and see what we got, which isn't much of anything. So this guy looks like he's got some problems. Read it again here. Yeah, I'm getting different. Every time I read it, I'm getting a different checksum. So this guy's got some sort of a data problem on him. Can't get the get the data off of him. So there, there's a little bit of something on there. Not much. <laughs> so it's reading something right here. But uh, for the most part, it looks like it's it's done. So I'll need to get a 2732-47E and get him replaced. So let's go ahead and check the other one real quick. Let's go ahead and pull out the board. 7F. Okay, piece of cake. Okay, we got 7F in the programmer. Let's go ahead and check him out, see what he says. Go ahead and uh, read him and see what we got. Alright, so we get a checksum of 1B47, and this this is something interesting um, with these particular EPROMs, is that every time I read it, I get a different result. So, there's something kind of weird going on with them. And before I was getting some data, now I'm not really getting much of anything, so there's some data down there. So these guys definitely have something strange going on. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is pull two of my 2732s and get them written with the correct data and get these guys swapped out. So stick with me. Okay, so I'll permanently borrow a couple of these Intel 2732As uh, from the spare board. And I'll go ahead and order some replacement 2732s to uh, get some he prompts back onto this board. So I'm pretty sure this board's got some problems, but I'm pretty sure I can get it working with just a little bit of attention. But right now, I'm going to borrow its EPROMs to get my Donkey Kong working and get it ready to play. So, all right, so we got that guy off to EPROMs. We'll go ahead and get them uh, erased and put the new code on them. Of course, to get these guys erased, I've got to take off these um, these stickers so I can expose the window. I got to do this carefully so I don't uh, cut myself because that would be bad. So I'll just go nice and slow. I'm not used to much pressure, mostly downward pressure more than anything else. Let's take it nice and easy, just so I can get that window exposed right there. I got most of this scraped off. I'll go ahead and take a little bit of alcohol and get it cleaned up. So there we go. Just trying to get most of this off. And this is just really old. It's been out in bad conditions, so it's just kind of It doesn't come off very easily, easily so it's gonna take your time, no big deal. This 
This one's coming off a bit cleaner so you can see the window there. But I'm trying to get exposed. There we go. Let's get a shot of that. So. I went ahead and loaded these into my programmer and then pulled the data off of them and saved it off to a file. For any reason I need it in the future, I'll have my game data that I can put back on these ROMs. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, wipe these off and get them cleaned up a bit more because they're... I'm going to make sure those windows are nice and clear so that the UV light can get through and get these guys erased for me. So. Stay with me, get these cleaned up, and we'll put them into the programmer. Alright, so the windows are exposed. Put them in the eraser, and then we'll get them programmed. So working on the board, uh, there was a loose heat sink on this chip. So I've got the EEPROMS eraser right now, so I'm looking at other issues, but this uh, heat sink had fallen off. I'm going to see if I can't figure out how I can get this reattached. I, mean, I, I would think that the best way to do it was to remove this existing compound and then replace it with some more adhesive compound. But uh, let me see if I can't find a way to get this reattached. They're going to be heating it up. Looks like it just needs to be removed. So I want to have to order some adhesive compound. I want to try just scraping what's left off so I can get some good stuff on there. I'm trying to do this carefully without messing anything else up. <clears throat> the worst thing would be to really tear up traces on the board. I'll cut myself. So let me check a couple things real quick, make sure I'm doing the right thing here. I feel like it's the right thing, but I want to double check to see if there's not uh, other methods or other things I need to look at or consider. So hang on one second. Okay, so I just finished programming 7E. I'm going to do 7F real quick, and I'll show you how I'm doing this. These 32s as opposed to 16, so I'll put them there in the programmer. And so this is going to be 7F. And the way that I do this, I'm going to go ahead and fill this with F's. So now my buffer is full of F's. We'll open up V7F, which is the file that I need to get onto this EEPROM. And I'm going to load it in a specific manner. So I'm going to fill the EEPROM from 000 to first 7FF. That's going to load the first block of the EEPROM. I'll say, yep, go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to load the file again into the buffer. I'm going to fill from data point 800 to FFF. And that's going to fill the second half of the EEPROM. So let me go ahead and show you real quick. So I can go through the program code here, and, and as we get to 800, right here it's all Fs. So that's the second half of the EEPROM that I need to fill with the same data code as I did up here. So I'll go ahead and open that file, select it. From 800 to FFF, say OK. Yep. So that's done. So if I scroll, if you look at the kind of ASCII that's here at the very beginning of the chip, scroll down to 800, it should look identical. And so now my buffer is full of the data that I want. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't know exactly, I haven't tested the Donkey Kong Jr. board. Uh, where it holds the uh, address 11 pin on these 2732s. So I want to double fill uh, all uh, address information on this with the same data, or the, the first half of the second half of the same data, so that no matter if it's high or low on address 11 pin, um, it doesn't matter. It'll have the data where it needs to be. So now that it's in my buffer, let's go ahead and program the chip, and I'll get this guy rolling. Okay, there it goes, programming the device. So we'll let this run, 
and then I'll come back, verify the chips, and then we'll get them onto the board. All right, coming back to this, um, did some checking. I'm pretty sure the best way at this point is to scrape this off and then get some new adhesive compound. Um, but I don't know if I want to worry too much about it right now. Maybe just leave it as is until I get things tested. I may, uh, may look to see what a replacement of this chip would be. I could just replace him, put brand new compound on the new chip, socket it, and all that kind of good stuff. So I'll probably do that. Um, and I'll come back if I if I can't get a replacement at a reasonable price or whatever. I'll just uh, I'll deal with this. But for right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna table this, and I'll come back to it after I get done with the EPROMs. All right, so my ROMs are in place. I say we go ahead and get this guy into the cabinet and see if it works. So not quite as expected, but at least the little weird bars are gone it's just a little bit scrambled so I don't know what happened there uh, it should be working <laughs> maybe I um, typoed something when I was filling the buffer so I'm gonna try that again I'm gonna clear these out or actually I'll double check it I'll double check the uh, data uh, I double check the pins uh, pin 21 is held high so it should be in the bottom half of the chip so uh, the data will need to be in the bottom half. So I'll go back and double check everything and make sure I have it right. It looks, I mean, I don't know. The data is there. It's just everything is being kind of drawn incorrectly. I don't, I'm not sure. So let me go back and I'll double check the EPROMs. Maybe I've got some other problem that is not related to the ROMs. But anyway, I'll go back and double check. Much better. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's what your game looks like. Looks like when you swap 7E and 7F on the board. Everything was a little bit garbled there, but I got them back in their correct positions. And as you can see, it's cleaned everything back up. Everything is looking good. So we had some weird blockage issues up top before on the key. Uh, Mr. Junior there had some block issues on the top of his head, as did most of the other characters. But now that's all cleaned up. And the game's looking pretty good, so I'm going to see if I can't play through the game here and see how it works and make sure all the character sprites are showing up correctly. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, this is working pretty good. Just clear this board real quick. Sweet. Okay, that looks pretty good here too. Uh oh. Well, I think we got it working. <laughs> 